Happy New Year's everyone. This video is probably coming out way later than the new year, but uh, just got done my first workout of the year. It's actually the fourth. I've been sick as a dog the last, you know, actually ever since like December 30th. The bad cough, like I'm pretty sure I got a really bad pharyngitis or like really bad cold, but uh, most likely viral. So only time and supportive care, fluids, NyQuil, DayQuil, whatever you want to use, decongestions. But uh, yeah, I just finished my first workout of the year. Did some back and biceps at my home gym. I wore a sweatshirt, that's why I'm sweating so damn much. I usually don't sweat that much, but uh, yeah, I feel better, but also just still not feel 100%. I did officially get licensed to practice in the state of Nevada, so that whole process has gone through. Took about a good, month, month and a half. Um, it was a lot of back and forth, but uh, super happy that it's finally done. Last thing that's left actually for me is to get my DEA and just get everything confirmed through the pharmacy board so that I can actually write prescriptions under my own name. But yeah, hoping to feel better. Yeah, excited for this new year. Happy 2020, y'all. We're gonna go crush this year. I'm super excited. A lot of awesome things in store for you guys and a lot of goals I want to achieve, so. Nope. I'm super excited. I made one of my bigger purchases. Well, not it's not that big, well, it's, it's big. But uh, one of my first big purchases, um, this is kind of a present to myself for starting my PA job. And it is this right here. It is a Mavic Mini, it's a drone. Super excited to use this. Uh, kind of my first big purchase. Long time no talk, guys, but uh, definitely been a while. Um, what, have I, what have I been up to? I've been training at my job. I'm fully certified, all that stuff. I actually see my first patients coming up next week, which is awesome. But uh, I've also been looking around for houses in the Vegas area, and there was one property that I really liked. I actually just toured it. Yeah, guys, I think I'm about to put an offer on a house, you know, with how much rent is becoming. Um, in Vegas, it's slowly becoming more expensive, especially living alone for now. Good morning, guys. Um, it is February 18th, Tuesday, and yesterday I officially saw my own patients. Um, they're slowly adding patients to my schedule, but they're gonna kind of baby us into getting a full patient load, which is awesome. The first one, essentially, she had allergic rhinitis, not taking any over-the-counter or daily allergy medication, antihistamine. Um, she was fighting a URI for quite some time, but went ahead and obviously prescribed her a daily oral allergy medication. I uh, told her humidifier, uh, nasal saline as well. But uh, other than that, the next patient was just a medication refill. He was a pharmacist, so he kind of knew his stuff. And that was a little bit nerve-wracking, but uh, he was overall a great patient. So first day was a success. Today I have four patients on my schedule and hopefully it goes well. I also woke up this morning with this message from Gabriel. Thank you for the kind message. I really appreciate you. Um, hope everything in life is going well for you and uh, that you really make it in whatever that you do and you really share that positivity that you've shown me. So I just recently purchased a standing desk um, topper, desk topper. It's super heavy, it's over 50 pounds, but uh, I'll show you guys in clinic what it looks like. Oh, all right. Yeah, it is Friday. Um, I don't even know I guess, what day is it per se. It's March 27th, Friday. Just got off of work. Um, I do have a new lens, so I've been trying it out. Hopefully it looks really nice. You probably can see this big old pimple on my forehead and all my blemishes, but you know, just keeping it real with you guys. Just finished my shift um, of work today. I'm still wearing my scrubs. I didn't see anyone acutely sick today, so I'm gonna take my scrubs off after I film just a little clip for you guys. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to update you guys on everything going on. You know, obviously COVID, being a new grad PA, working through all this craziness in um, primary care adult medicine. All of this kind of has picked up and ramped up in the last, what, two to three weeks. 
Um, and for me, working as a new grad, I haven't seen a lot of suspected COVID cases. I've definitely seen some, you know, I've been in full PPE, um, swap patients and screen them. But, uh, you know, initially we were doing a lot more testing, you know, when this all kind of became um, real in the US and it's definitely slowed down a little bit in our in our outpatient clinic setting. So I work for a big company, there's urgent cares all over uh, Las Vegas. So what we've been doing is we've been screening every single person at the door. Um, you know, this, the common symptoms of COVID, fever, shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, cough. Um, now they've added diarrhea as one of those common complaints. Any exposure to anyone that's been, um, you know, tested positive for COVID or even, you know, any recent travel, things like that. So those things we're starting to in incorporate at the front door. So when you do enter the clinic, you're asked those questions in your screen. Me personally, and a lot of the providers, we would hope that patients would be able to, or we'd be able to just check their temperatures at the door. Fever is so subjective if you don't have a thermometer or anything to check it. Um, patients, you know, that take Tylenol or Ibuprofen, they will tell you that they don't have a fever. So yeah, that's kind of what's been going on. We've been doing testing in our clinic, but we've slowed down a lot. We've been kind of moving people towards or directing people towards our urgent cares where our company has drive through, not drive through, but you drive up in your car and a provider comes out and swabs you. So that's kind of the direction that our company has been taken. And obviously it just promotes the least amount of exposure, unnecessary exposure to healthcare providers and everyone that's gonna be in the clinic. You know, I can't say I'm not anxious or worried about this because who would have thought that this would be something that could be so significant and so powerful and, and so impactful in 2020. You know, you'd think that we're so advanced in our technology and our medicine, um, but a simple virus can create such a big pandemic. Being in the front lines, I'm not in the ERs, I'm not in the urgent cares right now, so the ER hospital folks, they're the ones seeing the COVID patients that are dying and, you know, on ventilators. For us, we're kind of directing people to, you know, if they're young and healthy, don't have poor morbidities, to stay home, self-isolate, things like that. But if obviously they're, you know, older with a lot of risk factors like diabetes, COPD, um, like history of cancer, then we really want to just um, direct those people to get testing and then, you know, get admitted if needed. If needed, um, we we're advising patients to stay home, so we're actually incorporating more telemedicine, which is really cool and I think something that should have been around earlier for our company. But that's something that we're incorporating. I'll be, I'll be honest, initially when coronavirus was kind of uh, talked about you know, a few months ago, I thought it was more similar to like the common cold. But honestly, I would compare it more to like a pretty bad pneumonia, especially for sicker patients. Um, it can hit everyone so differently. Um, and I follow a lot of physicians and providers on Twitter, uh, hashtag med Twitter, if you wanna you know, stay updated and educated on really what's going on. You know, they're in the front lines, they're seeing these patients die, you know, even healthy people like us um, being exposed and, you know, decompensating very quickly. So that's scary in that sense. All right, so my camera died yesterday while I was filming. Uh, just a little recap for you guys, but things are changing every day regarding coronavirus. Um, I mean, I was just told a few days ago, or our clinic was told a few days ago that criteria for possible screening isn't just like the shortness of breath, cough, fever. Um, diarrhea and GI effects have been shown to be, at least from what I heard, 50 per, up to 50% of patients that were positive for COVID uh, testing. So, and also another kind of symptom or sign is loss of sense of taste or smell. So it's kind of crazy how this is manifesting and how it's affecting everyone in the medical community. You know, obviously we're trying to do our best to limit exposure to our patients, to our healthcare staff, um, but you know, criteria and protocol is changing so frequently that it's so, you know, it's so stressful and very overwhelming. I know for me, the first couple weeks that this happened, I was so stressed, I was not getting any sleep. I was, you know, very anxious and I still am. Um, I think with everyone hopefully doing their part and staying in, social distancing, keeping their space from, you know, large groups and, and possibly transmitting the coronavirus, um, we're able to really flatten the curve. Nevada hasn't been, at least for me, being in that primary care setting, you know, we are limited in what we're able to use as well, but it hasn't been as big of a factor because we're not testing as much. For my company, what we're doing is we're transitioning everyone to 
our convenient cares or urgent cares where they're able to just drive up in their car and a provider will come and swab their throat um, if they're highly suspicious of COVID. Um, that way, you know, they don't bring it into the clinic and they just limit the exposure to the healthcare provider as well as other people. You know, I'm trying to stay up to date on everything that's going on and the market is kind of being all crazy as well. And, you know, it's, 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 a, it's kind of bittersweet, but also funny because, you know, I'm in the middle of a big purchase. So um, that's supposed to close in the near future. So that's something that hasn't actually been affected, but I know, you know, the cost of things and the price of things are definitely gonna change in the near future. You know, Dr. Mike, obviously is you know very very vocal very big public figure he's been very good about expressing you know um, or debunking myths and you know telling the truth and really spitting the hardcore facts so if you're not following dr mike on youtube and instagram and stuff and twitter i really recommend you to I'll also link some twitter accounts of some like er physicians and people that i follow that really give you an in-depth look of what's really going on in the hospitals and for me being in the primary care setting Yes, we're testing people, but we're not in the very front front lines. We're, we're kind of like behind them. We're the people that send um, really highly suspicious or positive patients to the ER or you know, to our convenient care. So people that are in urgent care in the emergency rooms and the emergency hospitals, they're the real MVPs. And um, people that are you know, still doing emergency surgeries and procedures, things like that, they're, you guys are all the real MVPs. Uh, we're just trying to do our part to obviously keep the people that we don't you know, suspect COVID uh, keep them home, and especially if they're healthy. Um, even if we do suspect, suspect COVID, treatment plan for someone that is testing positive or negative and they're healthy, they don't have any you know, risk factors, is to self-isolate for 14 days. Um, so that's something that to keep in mind, and it's really sad to see because you know hospitals are saying they're out of ventilators. Um, the way that COVID is attacking the lungs and the pulmonary system is very aggressive and it's a very quick, quick, rapid decline. So that's something that I think people have been um, underestimating and I'll be honest with you guys I definitely underestimated as well when this first started so that's the big thing especially as us young people yes it sucks to stay inside yes it sucks to social distance I know we all miss our friends we all miss our families but we're doing it for the people that really are vulnerable and you know are compromised uh, in their health again it takes up to two weeks for the symptoms of COVID or coronavirus to show or to manifest so you could be positive or you could, you know, be in contact with someone that's positive, be exposed and go two weeks interacting with many, many people, touching different surfaces and not know that you can have coronavirus until the symptoms come about. So that's the big reason why we're trying to flatten the curve is really halt the progression and really halt the transmission of this disease because if we're able to all stay home um, and really keep the hospitals for the people that really need it, that are really sick, um, we're able to stop the transmission, slow the transmission, and you know, hopefully get everything back in you know running order. But it takes every single person to do that. Um, you know, it's devastating and ridiculous to see that. You know, even a week ago, there were people still on spring spring break and in large groups. This is how the numbers rise so fast. And USA is already the number one uh, total you know positive cases. So that's something that's you know something to think about and really just doing our part, doing our you know fair share of washing our hands, keeping our distance, and just being kind to others. And we have so many things to keep ourselves busy that you know we're so, I think, very lucky to be in this time going through this because you know this happened 100, 200 years ago. We wouldn't have any means of communicating with our friends or our family or you know seeing funny memes, being on TikTok, things like that. So I think we're very lucky and very blessed. And I think a lot of people are underestimating and under um, appreciating that, but Again, I really pray that this gets better and I don't see it really getting better in the next week or two, but we really shall see and um, I really hope it does. We just all need to do our part and together to you know, get through this and hopefully we're able to get through it with the least amount of casualties and least amount of people really you know, being affected by this. So hopefully you guys are all doing well. Stay safe, stay indoors, um, be kind to each other and don't forget to be like my blood type, be positive, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.